Okay, we're back, and we're going to do a rotations problem. Um, this is one of everyone's favorites. It's uh, rolling without slipping, where you have um, both linear and rotational motion simultaneously. And um, let's take the case for, say, like a, a ball rolling down a hill, where we want to find a few things out. Um, primarily, and the one that, uh, the, the aspect of this that, that a lot of students have trouble with is trying to figure out the accelerations. Uh, as you go down the hill. So first let's understand what rolling without slipping means. Um, two really important things. Um, first, the fact that there's no slipping, there, there's no rubbing, uh, no heat is being produced. Okay, we're basically talking about a static friction which is causing the torque. It's the, you know, if there wasn't any friction, a round object would just slide down a, a hill, uh, just like a, a block sliding down a hill. So that the static friction, or some people call it rolling friction, uh, is creating torque. And uh, the, the second thing is we can connect the linear motion with the rotational motion um, with this set of equations uh, for, for displacements, velocities, and accelerations. The other piece of this is that whenever you have both motions, um, you have to account for both motions as far as the math goes. We have to make use of both versions of Newton's second law. So there's a simultaneous set of equations on a system that we have to solve. So here it goes. Um, a ball going down the hill, so we, we know the inertia of a ball. It's a solid ball, so we'll say it's two fifths of r squared. Or it could be a disc, a ring, a hollow ball, whatever. Um, we need a force diagram. Okay, well, acting on the center of mass, of course, is gravity. We have a normal force. And then the fact that we're told that it's rolling means there's got to be a torque. Gravity, normal force, they can't produce torques. Gravity's acting on the center of mass. It, it can't produce torque. Uh, the normal force is parallel to the radius line there. Okay, remember that the center of the ball is the axis of rotation. Okay, so that can't produce torque. So why does it spin? Well, because you have a friction force there acting on the edge, which is causing torque. So the linear equation, F equals ma, is no different than it has ever been for something sliding down a hill. You always have a downhill piece of gravity, mg sine theta. And then you have friction going uphill opposite the acceleration, and so that's the negative force. That's it. Now, the, the, the part that a lot of people forget or kind of get stuck on is the rotational part, torque equals I alpha. Well, in general, torques, we use this idea of fr sine of some angle. Okay. Well, the force causing the torque is friction. It's a radius away from the axis of rotation, okay, which is the center of the ball. And then those two lines form a nice 90 degree angle right there. Okay. okay, so it looks like we have a bunch of unknowns. We don't know the linear acceleration, the angular acceleration, we don't know the friction. Okay. So we can make some substitutions. We can put in the inertia expression, 2 fits on r squared. This is where we can use this acceleration relationship. No slipping means the angular acceleration is the linear divided by radius. Okay. And as we have seen in other problems, you know, the, the size of the ball doesn't matter. The radius drops out. So we have this connection between friction and acceleration. And we can substitute this into the force equation. So that's going to look like something like this, and the mass drops up. We can collect the accelerations together. We bring that negative two fifths over. Uh, so we're going to have seven fifths the acceleration is g sine theta. 
And last but not least, uh, the, the linear acceleration is going to be 5 sevenths g sine theta. Okay. So we get the acceleration. Once we have the acceleration, I suppose we could plug it into the friction equation. Mm -hmm. That tells us how strong friction has to be in order for there to be no slippage. Uh, so that's going to be 2 fifths times 5 sevenths. That's going to be 2 sevenths. Um, mg sine of the angle of the hill. When there's no slipping, we, we could write down alpha. So we can just take that linear acceleration term and divide it by the radius of the ball. Okay, no problem. And because these are constant accelerations, you could ask for things like, you know, after three seconds, how far does it move? Um, what angle does it spin through? How fast is it going? All those typical sorts of, of constant acceleration type questions. Sometimes uh, they like to ask, what's the mu value that's responsible for there being no slipping? Okay, well, it can grip hard enough and make it just roll. Well, we have this expression for the friction here, and we also know um, that it's also the Muffin equation, um, the coefficient of friction times the normal force, which on a hill is mg cosine theta. And we could solve for mu if we needed to. Uh, the mg's would cancel out in that case, and uh, mu would be 2 sevenths sine divided by cosine, which is tangent, the angle of the that's the minimum friction we'd need in order for there to be no slipping. Okay, so all this is fine and good. This is just a lot of math right here, but keep in mind, the key points is we had to set up the torque equation, we had to set up the force, equ oops, the force equation for the linear motion, the torque equation for rotational motion. They're happening simultaneously, which is why we, we have to do the system. There's no other way of, of working this out. Um, so I hope this helps. Uh, Rolling without slipping is a, a real common sort of thing. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.